What's going on all you gamers, today I'll be going over Evil West and letting you know what I think of the game after fully completing it and spending a lot of time and energy slaying vampires in this Wild West action game with a twist. So if that interests you, then stay tuned, let's come up next. Right, so where do I start with Evil West? The game itself is quite a simple premise and has you playing as Jesse Rentier, a vampire hunter who sets out to defeat a whole bunch of baddies of the undead variety as you try to stop them before they grow in power and make your life a whole bunch harder. Now I don't want to spoil the plotline too much, it's probably nothing you haven't seen quite a few times over, protagonists must stop evil villain from becoming even more powerful and trying to take over. However, one thing I would say with this game is that the voice acting and the cutscenes are actually very, very good and quite compelling, and they managed to weave a much more cohesive plotline because of this. In fact, in this regard, the makers of the game, Flying Wild Hog, have actually done outstanding. Now back to the game itself, and I would say it will probably one that will divide people massively. It's very much a love it or hate it style of game. First and foremost is a single player experience that has you tackling a whole host of vampires and monsters as you progress your way through the campaign, of which there are 16 separate levels. This can be done over four difficulty settings, ranging from story at its base, which is quite easy and you'll make your way through without any troubles, onto normal, then hard, and then even evil, which at later levels is actually quite challenging. And you can also replay any of the missions you've completed if you wanted to go back to try and find something you've missed. There is also a drop in co-op, but I'll get back to that a little bit later. Now, as you make your way through these levels, you'll notice that quite a few of them have certain themes. Some, as you would have guessed it, are very Wild West orientated, but others have slightly more chaotic settings, with some of the colour schemes being a little bit strong. For example, the very red ones, or some that are also quite green. It's by no means terrible, but sometimes it can come off I found a little bit bright, especially the burning levels. In general though, I found that the locations are actually done quite well, and definitely varied things up enough, as you go from the sunny wild west all the way to snow-capped mountains and such. You'll be making your way through these, all in an effort to make your character grow stronger and increase their arsenal. Now the maps are very linear, and although sometimes they do have slight alternate paths and puzzles about them, they are usually quite simplistic, so don't expect any heavy head scratching here. This is the intended style from them, as it means you're not going to be spending too long between fights, which I would say is probably where the game mostly shines. Now, the combat system in this game is very clean, and a lot of fun as well, with almost every single button and direction on your controller doing something different. Whether it be from using a flamethrower to toastify your enemies, or burn bushes to see if there's any treasures behind it, or with you being able to jump into an electric melee combo into an awesome finisher. Again, these look absolutely awesome, and the game has managed to mix up melee and range very well. Another really good thing in my opinion is the fact that you'll be unlocking new weapons, perks and upgrades as you play through the game. As you level up, you'll unlock a lot of these, but another nice feature is that you can also find some, as there'll be collectibles that you need to hunt down, ranging from lore, money bags, and the most important probably, are going to be the unique chests. These tend to contain either a cosmetic item for your character or weapon, or sometimes they'll hold a perk point, but mainly you're going to be after them for the unique perks you can only find in some of them. In fact, you can spend a lot of time unlocking perks and spending your hard-earned gold upgrading weapons within this game. Some of these upgrades really do make your character feel extremely powerful, none more so in my opinion than when you manage to harness the power of electricity, when your weapons have new added effects, and even later in the game when you unlock the supercharge mode and can zoom around the screen decimating your foes for a 7 second window, in which you're nigh unstoppable. In Myers, the combat and upgrading of the character are at its core where this game tends to shine. Also, being able to reset your character at any time by going back to a machine that can respec you really helps you out to diversify and work out what build you enjoy playing. Now, the enemies and bosses you face are also very well done, and some of them can be quite challenging, especially at harder difficulties when you first tackle them. This game in my eyes is ideal for anyone who wants to go for a campaign and just have some chaotic fun and power up your vampire hunter as you go. However, there are a few issues currently with the game. For anyone who likes co-op like I do, the co-op pretty much fully revolves around the host of the game, so unfortunately only their progress is stored and only their campaign will progress as they go, so the person who's jumping in with them will have to complete their campaign again. 
However, one good aspect is that whoever jumps in with you pretty much gets exactly what you get. So whatever resources, perks, etc. you've unlocked, they'll get that amount and they'll be able to respec their character whenever they jump into your game session. However, there are still a few problems with co-op currently, mainly with the fact that quite often it just won't tend to let you proceed past certain points. At certain points in the stage, both of you have to be in line in order to progress over gaps or through certain areas. Sometimes it's just not highlighted because you're playing co-op. At this point, the only way to proceed will be to quit out of the game and then re-invite them again and go from wherever it lost safe from. In my opinion, even though I found it slightly more fun comboing things up with a friend, I don't think it's fully polished in this respect, and as a whole it's probably better as a single player experience currently. Another bug I found is that there's a slight audio bug at certain times where electricity keeps sounding over and over, this was very loud, and again it means you're probably going to reset and go back to your last save. And lastly, probably the most annoying bug is going to be at stage 6, where if you haven't found the hidden chest, but you've completed the level, unfortunately when you go back, currently it's bugged out, and you can't proceed further in the map, meaning you can't actually get that special perk. This was a bit of a dampener for me, because I wanted to do a video about all of the perks, and this was a bit annoying. But ultimately these are quite simple fixes, and should be sorted out by the developers quite soon I'd imagine. Now like I said the game is very much story driven and quite linear but I found this actually worked very well with a great mixture of combat and nice cutscenes progressing the plot. For anyone who's looking for endgame however there's no real additional extras after you complete the game but instead you'll be able to start the game again with a new game plus. Here you'll be hunting for anything you've missed for example perks and upgrades in order to finish off your character and make them as powerful as you possibly can. Overall, I have to say that I actually really enjoyed Evil West. It does have its share of issues, but for me, the good definitely outweighed the bad. And for anyone after a quite straightforward but frantic third person action game, they could definitely sink around 16 hours or even more into this quite easily, and then go on to New Game Plus, in order to make your character even more badass. So for anyone looking for that, this may well be worth a look. If, however, you're into the more open world and true endgame games, this probably won't be for you. But for me, currently as it stands, the games are about a 7.5 out of 10. If they manage to fix up the issues and glitches, I'd probably say it around up to an 8. Let me know in the comments, have you played this game? If so, what do you think of it? And as always, 4 Things Gaming, 4 Things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.